Hello everybody, it's Ricky from Connerty Meadows Farm. Uh, today we are going to render some lard down so I can make some more soap. Um, so the lard is the fat taken from around the kidney of uh, the animal. It's usually the cleanest fat. There's not a lot of meat and whatnot on it. Uh, you'll need a sharp knife to cut it up, or better yet, ask your butcher to uh, grind it before you get it. You're, today I'm using uh, a pot, a very heavy pot. You don't want a thin walled pot because you can scorch it. Uh, I'm using a Le Creuset pot. Um, you can do it in the microwave, you can do it in a pot, you can do it in the crock pot, you can do it in the oven. There's many different ways of rendering down your lard, but today I will be showing you in the Le Creuset pot. So one of the first things that I do when I'm rendering my lard is I get the jars I need. Usually for my Le Creuset pot filled to the top, it'll fill two and a half to, to three of these jars. Um, the first thing you need to do is sterilize them. So I wash them out and then I boil water and I'll pour the boiling water in them and I'll leave them out to air dry and same with the lids. That's step number one. For the leaf lard, you can see there's still like some red um, meaty parts in here. Um, and this is frozen solid so I'm just going to leave this sit on the counter for a little bit until it gets to the point that I can cut it. But then I'm going to cut it in very, very small chunks. Um, like I said, if you can get your butcher to grind it for you before they freeze it, that is really the ideal thing. During the rendering process, um, this stuff will all be filtered out because we definitely don't want this in our cleaned lard. Okay, so the lard's been sitting out for a little bit. Um, not too long. I don't want it to completely thaw. There's still icicles in there. And I want that because if it's too soft, uh, cutting it is really difficult and it's really mushy. So if you can see, this is still hard to push, leaves a little bit of an indent, which is perfect for cutting with the knife. The knife just slides right through. Yes, you still have to apply a little bit of pressure, but if I went much softer than this, it would be really, really difficult to cut because it would be more mushy. So you still want it slightly frozen so that it's firm, so that you can still cut it otherwise it's mush. So you can see um, my lard chunks are really really small. Um, I kind of just cut them down and then go smaller and smaller. The smaller you can get the, the chunks of the fat, the um, more they'll melt down and the more clean lard you'll get from the end product. So again, if you can, grind them. Um, I don't have a grinder and it's cheaper for me to get them straight from the butcher like this when we butcher our pigs. Um, so I just go as tiny as I can with a knife. Okay, so my lard is cut up very, very small. It's in my Le Creuset pot. As you can see, it's nice and heaping. Um, and I'm just going to turn this on to low. Um, this is not something you want to put on high because you don't want to burn this. Uh, you want to go low and slow. I put the lid on to help keep a little bit of the heat in. Nice swooshy. My jar is are sterilized, my lids are sterilized, and now we're going to get ready to set up the filtering system. Filtering system doesn't have to be anything um, crazy. Uh, it just has to get out all the little bits. So, I have my stainless steel funnel. That goes on first. I have oops, stainless steel sterilized uh, clothespins. And I have a J-cloth. Um, so, I'm going to fold the J-cloth in half. It's going to go into here, and then I'll close pin it in place. I'll come back and show you when it's done. So, that's it. That's what it looks like. Um, the reason why I use J-cloth um, is because I just throw it out when I'm done. I don't want to have to wash and clean it. Um, I'm on a well and a septic system, so to try to wash that, that would be a lot of oils and fats going down into my system. So it's actually just easier for me to throw this out. But um, I wring it all out to make sure I've got all the bits out. Uh, you can use muslin, you can use cotton, you can use pretty much anything you want. I know some people use coffee filters. I just find that that takes a really long time for the oils to go through. 
So this is just going to sit on low. Um, some people like to just put a few drops of water in the bottom just to get it started. Um, I don't because I don't want any chance of mold um, in the finished product. So we'll just let this cook for a bit and we'll stir it and I'll come back and show you all the things that are happening and how we um, strain it into here and what your finished product will look like. Okay, so it's been a half an hour or so. I just pulled the lid off. And as you can see, it's actually not as high as it was. If you listen when I push down, you can hear that it is cooking underneath. It kind of sounds like um, uh, bacon cooking, which essentially it is. It's just the fat of the bacon. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to get some from the bottom to the top and stir this around a bit, which I can't do one-handed. So I'm going to put you down and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So you can see that the tops are starting to get all shiny and that's them melting down. Um, of note, rendering lard you want to do low and slow. And the reason behind that is um, as the fat cooks, it um, melts. And if you melt it on a high heat, you can actually burn it, which then in turn means that your lard is gonna be brown. There's nothing wrong with that. It just also means that in turn, your soap will be brown. So the lower and the slower that you can melt your lard, the whiter and the cleaner it's gonna be in the end and it's also going to not have as much of a smell when you do it a lot of people really dislike the smell of rendering um, and that's one of the reasons why they choose to do it outside um, i don't mind the smell uh, sometimes i will put on a beeswax candle to help kind of keep the smell at a minimum but it doesn't bother me at all so you can see that it's getting shiny in there and if you look down on the side there's just a little bit of oil starting to come down there. And eventually, when we get a little bit more, you can see the liquid moving down there. Um, there you go, there's some liquid coming up. So eventually, as this melts down a little bit more, that liquid is what we're gonna be straining, uh, scooping out and straining into the jar. But I'd like to see it um, melt down quite a bit more before we get to that. Okay, so five more minutes have passed. It uh, has gone pretty quick at this point. You now can really see all the lard uh, melting down. This is good, this is exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna push all the rest of this into those hot liquidy oils and that'll help it all melt down. Um, it's probably only gonna be another five or 10 minutes and then we're going to start to take out um, some of the liquid and strain it and then we'll have some nice white lard. Alright, so we have a nice um, slow boil going on. There's a lot more liquid now than there is uh, chunks. So we're just gonna start uh, ladling some of this out and putting it through the strainer. So I have a nice little ladle here, um, stainless steel, and let me just, it's okay if some chunks get in because the um, strainer will get that out. And we just take it over. And out comes nice clear liquid. And then as this cools, this liquid will turn white. As of right now, it's just a nice um, goldeny kind of yellow. And just slow and steady. It's not a big grace. I try not to get too many chunks in so that I don't have to strain so much through. And that's it. I'll come back and I'll show you a bit more in a little later. So I just want to point out something 
that I forgot to point out earlier. Um, you'll notice I have a towel down on the counter and the jar is on the towel. And the reason behind that is the counter is very cool and the jar, even though it was sterilized and warm, um, you're putting extremely hot liquid into the jar. And if the jar was sitting directly on the cool counter, you could actually have this jar explode. So uh, just make sure that you've got a towel or um, some heat plate or something like that that's stopping it from touching a very cool counter. And that way you're not gonna worry about this exploding because this is really, really, really hot. Okay, so I have filled this one. Um, you wanna leave a half an inch uh, headspace at the top of the jar and now because this liquid is ridiculously hot if I just put my lid on and screw it down tight it will seal itself um, you just have to listen for the pop and then you know that it has sealed itself then this will go down in my cellar until I'm ready to use it um, properly sealed sterilized um, products like this I've had last up to a year in my cellar. That doesn't mean that they will last up to a year, but I have had them last up to a year with no issues at all. Okay, the lid is on and I am just going to carry it by the lid. And again, I am setting it on a towel so that the cold um, counter doesn't make my jar explode. And I am ready to move this jar closer and start straining into this jar. You can see that um, it's starting to get a little bit darker and that's what happens uh, as you go through jar by jar when you strain off a little bit at a time each jar will progressively get a little darker in the liquid uh, as this cooks down a lot more. So usually if you were going to use um, this rendered lard the first bit um, for cooking, this is what you would use for your pastries and your pies and stuff because it's going to be the clearest and the best lard, um, but of course you can use any of them. This one will have the least amount of smell and the least amount of flavor though. Okay, so lard's all rendered down. I have strained it all through the strainer and this is what's left. Now these are pretty crunchy bits. There's some in there that are a little bit softer. Uh, because we homestead, this won't go to waste. We'll salt this down and we can use it as uh, toppings for salads and stuff like Caesar salad. You'd use it like bacon bits. Um, and sometimes we just feed it to the chickens as a little extra protein snack. Um, so you can see the color changes. This one's starting to cool down. And that one's still golden. And that one's just a little bit left too. All the uh, jars are cooled off now and they've all sealed. So they're ready to go down to my pantry. As you can see, they are all a very nice white. Even the last one I did um, stayed a very, very nice white. And my uh, bits for salad, or I cook them in the oven again with some salt and uh, now they're a tasty little snack. We'll freeze these and pull them out for when we meet Caesar salad. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them off and I'll do my best to answer for you. Till next time, bye.